Hello and welcome to part two of the Build With Me video for Rosie's Hobbit Hole. End of part one, I left you just starting to paint the figures and also working on the height and the rise of the terrain. If you're not yet a subscriber, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget also to set that bell so that whenever one of my videos goes live, you are actually informed. I'll jump back now to old beard, well, young beard, I'm older now, and uh, leave you to enjoy the rest of this video. I'm expecting this to be part two of three, but I'm not 100% sure, so we'll see, and I will see you again at the end of the video. That's finished. I've carved away. I've left it going up to the same height, actually, to the full height. Uh, one reason was that I didn't realise that on this side, at least, there's actually a little bit of a hedged bank with some grass on the top. So I'll be building a hedge, a, a little hedge fenced, building a fence here and then grass around it um, and it's actually quite a uh, quite a feature so I hadn't realized that until I looked deeply at the picture so what we've got we've got the paths going up to the doorways uh, dug down a bit deeper and everything else is uh, is at a good height and I think that actually is going to look okay particularly when you look at how much this has built up um, it's not going to be too hard to get to that level what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the gator glue to stick the uh, stick that down to the wooden base uh, and then I'm going to have to put that outside um, on the desk outside in the uh, on the landing because I don't have space in here at the moment um, and uh, clamp that and weight it and what have you and then I'll get on with something else so that might be my final act on this this evening uh, but it's good it's getting there we're making progress I will um, I will be back on this build as soon as I can be I've got to the end of Sunday and I'm absolutely exhausted so I'm just going to do a little bit on this just so that I can keep some focus and some progress going and then I'm going to get a relatively early night. So my plan is to put a window in the house next door which is going to go right here I think. As I've mentioned before I didn't have enough space and probably looking at it I've not done this absolutely perfectly but the focus of it is Sam and Rosie's house so whatever. Uh, I could just say that their one goes further back and Sam's is more flat it's almost like a uh, the shape is more like that and then flat for Sam. Anyway, so I'm going to put use the same material as I did for the round window that's on Sam's house, but I'm going to put a little roof over the top of it uh, with the same technique with matchsticks. And then once I've done that, I will be doing a little bit of the sculpty, um, just probably towards the front. So I'll be looking at um, just 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 going up to the foam and not much more than that because I'm very tired but I do want to achieve something and that's the first step of the ne of the next part of the build so I will be back later on to show you how that's going and um, I will look forward to uh, making some progress this evening I hope so I got quite a lot done actually in the end which I'm quite pleased about and it's still not so late that I can't get a nice early night which I'm also very very pleased about I've put a window on here, which you can't see very well. I will move the camera around in a short while to show you that one. Um, and I've also, as you can see, put the Luke's APS modeling compound all the way along the front to smooth it up. So this is where the track goes. This is where the first entrance goes. And here is where the second entrance goes. And I'm going to let that go off and then I'll come back and I can't decide whether I'm going to put more sculpting on here or if I'm just going to go straight in with uh, the, uh, the rest of the treatment. I probably will go for some more sculpting. But for now, I'm happy. I've reached the place I wanted to. So I'm not going to push on. I'm going to go and get a rest and hopefully have more energy tomorrow. So now let me see if I can very carefully and without it being too juddery, move the tripod around. There we are, that was okay, wasn't it? And zoom right in. There we are, we've got a little window. So, I will let that dry. That's just been glued on. Actually, I did end up using Luke's basing glue as well because it's uh, a little more viscous, so it actually held it without me having to faff around with anything else. Um, I will put a roof over that, as I mentioned, but I'll do that once it's fully dried. Um, and my plan is to... Uh, do some art or do or maybe print out a picture of some of a window with some um, curtains or something and stick it in the middle so that won't be going on to gray so don't worry so anyway there we are that's not so bad not such a bad place to leave it i will be back to this tomorrow i need to keep doing a little bit every day uh, but for now i'm pretty pleased with the progress i've made 
We're back to work on the Hobbit hole for Rosie. I've had a few deliveries through today, so I thought I'd show you those first. And then what I'm gonna be doing is continuing with the Luke's modeling compound to go up over the rest of the model, just to finish that off, let that go off. And then tomorrow I can start doing the dressing up, which is good because I'll have other things happening this evening as well. I've had this little item here, which hopefully won't get too dark. Yeah, so that has some uh, swords, which won't be going on, obviously. Uh, it has a little kind of plant pot here, which will be. It has some little tools, um, a sieve and some clogs, which I probably won't put the clogs on because hobbits don't wear shoes. It's got a saw and an ax handle and then a little kind of like uh, unit, gardening unit. So I'll be popping that probably uh, I think that's in shot, just about, just somewhere outside there. That's going to go in the garden. Secondly, I have a hitching rails and pump from um, Knuckle Duster Miniatures Old West, uh, which was the best thing I could find on eBay for the little, tiny little pump. So there we are, tiny little pump. So that's very, very cool. Um, and a hitching post. <laughs> Not that I need them. But anyway, it was only a very cheap item. And the other thing that's come, which isn't actually going to be useful, I ordered some more sunflowers and they're just a little, little bit too teeny tiny uh, for what I'm wanting. So they'll go and possibly be used on the model railway. They're not going to get wasted. But the other ones I bought the other day, which are larger, are going to be absolutely perfect. So what I'm going to do now is get my hands filthy and start smearing the uh, modeling compound all over this. And I will be back a bit later on to show off just how it looks. Yesterday I ended about 11 o'clock and I was way too tired to even think about videoing, so I didn't. Um, but I did do a fair amount on this. It's actually quite tiring working with this uh, modeling compound to make it as smooth as I was trying to make it. And I was hammering away and I just went to bed. However, I'm back. I've got a bit more energy and I'm going to do as much as I can. What I've realised is, is that before I finish doing off the top, you can't see that, before I finish do, doing off the top of the Hobbit hole, I need to think about the roof. Um, and if you look at the picture, you'll see that coming from behind the chimney and going across, there is a ridge pole. And then from down there, there is like the roof kind of slopes down. What I've got is this thick skewer, which has been come from a dinner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press that into the back of the chimney and then make the roof sections coming down here and down here. Um, and when I've done that, uh, and I'll probably end up doing all of the... Um, all of the rest of it as well then i'll continue working with this modeling compound to build up the back of the um of the actual hobbit hole which does actually go quite high looking at the picture so it's probably going to add another inch maybe uh, maybe even four centimeters to the height of it so it's going to take maybe two or three um, if i do it all in modeling compound it's going to take a lot of modeling compound so i might end up even um, sticking some more foam on there so we will see but it's an experiment I'm, I'm definitely missed a little bit last night I was hoping to have completed all this last night um, so I'm a little bit behind where I wanted to be so I'm going to try and crack on and get as much of this done as I can this evening and I will try to come back on camera to show the progress by the end of the day so I've spent some time looking at this and I have built it up I have put in the beam behind the chimney as you can see and what I've also done is carved out some more blue foam and stuck it on using the uh, gator glue. I've just noticed that I've left the, the lid off, which is not a very good idea with gator glue, so I'll put that lid back on. I'm pretty pleased with how that's looking at the moment. I think that that will work quite well. I may need to do some carving down, but right now it's, um, yeah, it, it's going to build up to the correct height. Um, and with maybe a little bit of carving once it's all finished, uh, it will be absolutely the correct contours and then I can do the rest of the modelling compound tomorrow. And yeah, um, I'm still a little behind on this build from where I wanted to be, but not quite as terrible uh, as I thought earlier this evening when I realised that actually I needed to put more foam on this. We're getting there. It's a really good build. I think it's going to look fantastic when it's done. I'm massively excited by how it looks. Just a little bit of rework and a little bit of doing things again and, you know, should have planned better, but it's all good. I'm really enjoying making it and I'm happy that we are where we are. It's the morning after and that has glued very nicely. It's very solid indeed, which is good. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to try and get some time on this during the day. Um, I'm getting a bit frustrated with how slowly it's going. So I'm going to carve it down and I'll try to in invite you along whenever I do a little bit. 
uh, because this evening I'd very much like to get to the point where I can put the rest of Luke's compound on all over and leave it to dry overnight. So, very pleased, I'm going to crack on today and I will invite you along when I do something. I've not got half as much done during the day as I hoped because I've actually been a bit busy, uh, but what I have done just around lunch is begun to shape up the way that the roof is going to go. So it's a curved roof and it goes up behind the chimney. So this I've just used some packing card which uh, will give me the shape and then I'll be able to lay over the top of that with the actual tiles, but I'll do that after I've finished doing all the scenery. I think. Um, the other thing that I've done is I have, if I can show that, I have cut a little section which is going to be a little bit of uh, a kitchen garden because I think Sam would definitely have a kitchen garden wouldn't he. So I'm going to glue those two things in place and then also cut and shape and glue in place the roof for the back here. Once that's done and they're set and stable, I will then do the rest of the roof around down the front here and also the other side, which is along there and across the top of the window at the end, which you can't see at the moment. Uh, and that's good. So I'm just going to crack on with that now for a bit and let it dry. And uh, yeah, onwards. I've put the rest of the card showing the form of the roof and stuck it in just now with PVA. I'll leave that to dry, it won't take very long. And then I'll come back and carry on doing the sculptor mold basing. So yeah, bit of progress, looking good. Happy with it so far, um, onwards and upwards. The cardboard is stuck down well enough. Now on the window over here and all the way along the front, so that's looking very nice. So now I have my modeling compound and I'm going to mix it up and I'm just going to do as much as I can before I pass out with the exhaustion. Hopefully I won't pass out with the exhaustion before I finish because I'd very much like to have this done tonight. This is a big moment because I actually have used one kilogram of Luke's mix and I've opened another bag. So yeah, it's going through it quite quickly. I might even have to order again. What you can see here is the uh, little garden area which I'm doing for, for Sam. So I'm going to turn the camera off and just get stuck in and do as much of this sculpting as I possibly can. So I'll invite you back at the end of the, of the evening and show you where I've got to. There we have it, the end of the night, and I've finished doing the uh, sculptor mould. And I'm very pleased with how that's gone on, actually. I was at the first making to the batteries a bit too large, and it was drying out quite a lot before I'd even got to spreading it. But I halved and then halved again the batch size, and that made that it was still very moist and very easy to spread and smooth. And I'm, I, I mean, I'm happy with how it looks. It's not a smooth bowling green it's a rough old bank which has a beautiful hobbit hole dug into it so when that's covered over with flock and with uh, all, all the other processes it'll look really really good it's all smoothed in around the um, it's just coming on really well I'm very very pleased so I'm going to leave that to go off overnight and tomorrow I'll probably come in and start applying paint and sand my plan for today in the brief gaps during work when I can get back to my desk is to start working on the shingling for the roof. I have these Sarissa cardboard shingles, which I really, really like. They work very well. And I have a few offcuts that I save. So you can see that there's one gonna go there and I'll do another one here and cut it here and build it up. And that should look well. I think the rest of this here and most of this down on this side is actually gonna be covered over with not with shingles. I might do some shingles on some of the on some of the um, deeper sections, but I think a lot of that will actually end up then getting covered over with grasses and with soil and what have you. So that's what I'm going to do today. I will be sure to show you how it looks like when I am done. The roof is in place, including you can see I'm just securing the uh, shingles that are going over the window here. And so now I'm on to the bit that I really like. I'm going to start dressing the board, call it a board, the display board, and then I can begin doing the ground. So doing the, the dirt and then the grass and then the static grass and then everything else around it. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put the fence in along here and also do the fence, which you can see it kind of is very, very close to this bank here goes in here, disappears inside some bushes, 
and then comes out at 90 degrees here towards where the fence is. So where the fence is, where the gate is. So what I'm going to be doing is using this tool here, which will allow me to press holes into the terrain and then I can, that is actually the right size for a matchstick and I'll then be able to put the matchstick in there with some glue and it will stick in place. And that is what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to gather my matchsticks uh, and I will probably put this on with some music so you can enjoy watching this, but I will shift the camera. So I'll be back in a minute and I will, you can watch me as I, as I put the fence along in this, in this area. So there we are, that was actually quite good fun doing that. They're all stuck in with PVA. What I'll do is I'll leave that now and come back to that tomorrow. Uh, that's going to be all nice and secure. They're going to glue in nicely because they've, they've actually dug in. And tomorrow I can start to do the base. Now I'm looking at this and I'm seeing that it's quite a sandy colour. Actually you can't see it there. I'm looking at that and realising that the, the, the land is actually quite a sandy colour. So I'm going to have a little bit of fun looking up some materials to do that with. Normally I do brown soil. 
um, this is very much sort of a lighter, sandier soil. So I'm going to be thinking about that um, and getting that all covered on tomorrow and then that will seal it all down, a uh, bit more support for the fence and onwards. So yeah, we are making good progress here. Next up, <clears throat> I'm going to be painting all of the, well the entire board actually. Yeah, I'm not going to be doing it with the usual brown terrain paint. I've actually mixed up some more paint with a different colour, the Afrikansky, which I've used in the past. Because if you have a look, you'll see um, on the picture that I'm going off, it's a very pale coloured soil and it even goes pale over towards the edges. And so that will do a better job of giving me that base colour. So I'm going to do that very quickly. I'm going to just paint across the whole thing. I'll pop some music on and you can watch.
now that the first paint on the base is dry, I'm going to come in and I'm going to work on the roof. So I've just got some dark grey paint, just some house paint as it is. Uh, and the first off, first colour, um, because they're slates, if we look at the picture, I'm just going to cover that all over with grey paint. Next up, I'm going to put some reddish brown onto the chimney. But I want this to be quite a dry brush. So I need to get some, get some uh, roll. As my brush is wet because I've just washed it, dry that off. And get some, I don't want to put too much on. There we are, that's very effective, that looks great. I may come back with some more, but for now that is sufficient. So the other day, I was walking out of room 13, about to go downstairs, and I glanced out the back window, and I noticed that our bank has very pale, creamy coloured soil. That photograph was taken from the landing just above the stairs, and what you'll notice is, is that it is very like the colour that you see on the track on this picture. So I went outside with a little shovel and I picked them up and I spread it out on a tray and I've been sat that in front of the fire for a couple of days and it's now perfectly dry and the colour match is pretty good. So my plan for today is to make use of this and to put that down over the uh, the diorama where I want it to go, not all of it, I'm probably going to brown the soil by the actual uh, hobbit hole and where Sam has been preparing the ground for lurt for actually growing because I think that he would know how to use compost uh, but this is going to be really nice because it's also going to be a touch of home that's going to be on this diorama. I'm happy with how dry this sand is now, this soil, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sieve it through my smallest sieve, my number one as I call it, and I'm going to put it into this container so that I have it and I can then start to spread it onto the path, onto the, uh, onto the little track. So I'm going to go and do that now uh, and I'll be back when I'm starting to actually make use of this. I've just sat, watched Father Ted and sifted out all of that soil into this useful container and it is now very very fine and looks really good. You can see just how fine that is, you can barely see that going out, so that's really nice. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to get my watered down PVA paint it on where I want it to go, which is all the way along this, and then sprinkle it over using the little tub thing that I've got inside. That's my usual pattern. So I will pop some music on and you can watch along. I'm going to use a bigger brush than I normally do because I don't have all that much time and that will allow me to do this slightly quicker. So enjoy the music.
There we are. I'm going to let that to dry now, probably for the next hour or so, and then come back and see what it looks like. But I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to leave it how it is and let that paint to dry. Paint? I keep saying that. Let the glue dry. I've left this a little bit to dry, just enough. So what I'm now going to do, carefully move that out of the way, is very carefully pick it up and empty into this tray from which I can then put it back into its pot. I thought I'd do this on camera, actually because I'm right-handed or stronger with my right hand, I'm actually going to move that around. There we are, because I can then control it better with this hand. So let's see whether I damage it or whether this all goes very, very badly wrong. Well, there we are. That has stuck quite nicely. I'm now going to take that down into a warmer room so that it can dry properly for a good few hours. And then I'll come across and hoover it uh, to get all this off. But looking at it, I'm actually quite tempted to go sift a load more and cover the whole thing and then flock on top of that because that's the right color for the, for the soil. Uh, so I might even end up doing that, but that has, that has come out about a thousand times better than I, than I thought it might. I'm very, very, very pleased. I've been thinking about this quite a lot and wondering what I'm going to do and how I'm going to go. I'm very, very pleased with the way that the track works, but I'm not sure how to transition it over to the rest of the, of the build. And after quite a lot of thought, um, I think, yeah, I'm still undecided. What I'm thinking of doing is potentially using the same color paint as I've put across the entire board. and. But this was put on using glue, so it's taken no colour. It's not bled any colour from any paint because it's been stuck on using the plane. Uh, so if I paint these this colour on and put the, the, the dirt over the top of it, some of that dirt will take on the colour of the paint that's coming through, which I quite like, and it will raise it so that it actually looks f flat, I think. At the moment, there's a little lip around the edge of the track, raising the track above the surrounding it, and if you look on the picture here, you can see that uh, the, the, it, it should be coming up out of it and there should be quite a lot of grass. Now, I think that's what I'm going to do, and if it doesn't work, then I'll just have to kind of like cope with that and do something different. So I'm going to give it a try. I'm probably going to start off over here um, and just do a little corner, scatter the sand on and see how it looks, um, and then decide how to do the rest of the build. So I will leave the camera running because capturing mistakes is almost more fun than capturing things that work first time. So uh, yeah, I'll turn some music on and you can watch me do this attempt. I've done a small amount. I've stepped away for a bit, which is always a good idea when you're modeling. And I've had a think, and I've also taken a picture and sent it to Angela and had a chat with her. I think it's gonna look okay. I was a little bit unsure at first. It does lose a lot of the purple and that kind of nice color, but then it also looks like soil and it looks great. And I think that the purple is coming through slightly, very subtly. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna crack on with the rest of this board, doing exactly the same thing again. So painting the paint on, scattering a bit of dust and moving on. And I will come back at the end when I'm done. I'm not gonna run the camera for the whole time. There's gonna be enough music and speeded up sections in my videos. I think I'm gonna to have to uh, think about limiting that a bit because the last one has been a bit crazy. So I will show you what it looks like when I have completed doing this task. Well, there we are. That's enough for tonight, I think. There's a bit more to do tomorrow once this has dried. Um, there's a few bits that have been missed here and clearly I need to do the front of the hole, uh, the front of the mound. But I'm going to do that by standing it up and so I just want to let it all dry and I'll touch those bits up as well tomorrow. Uh, but I'm pretty pleased with that. It's got enough of a differentiation between where the track is and where the rest of the land is. Over here I'm going to mix the purple in um, the brown, the Afrikanski in with some chocolate because Sam would have dug his vegetable patch over with compost, obviously being a good gardener. And so I think that would be a richer color, but I'm pretty pleased with how that's looking. Um, I'm, I'm more than pretty, very pleased with how that's looking. 
what I have done as well is put a made the uh, gate a little narrower because it was just quite wide before it was this wide before and I've added two more sticks there uh, and I might put another one in over here uh, very easy for me to add so that's not a problem at all but yeah cracking on good progress for the evening we'll be back to this tomorrow it's just before work the next day and what I'm going to do now in the few minutes I've got spare to me is the um, paint and the dust over the top of this part. So I've turned the hub hole on its back so I can do that a little bit easier. So I'm going to crack on with that now and I'll show you what it looks like when it is done. The next thing to do on this build, and we're getting pretty close to uh, to the most exciting part now, is I want to put a reddish paint over the top of where Sam will be working on his vegetable garden. This is because of course he would definitely have used compost. So I've got this reddish paint and it is going to look a little bit shocking but trust me it will work out and what I'm going to do is paint this over this area and then scatter the same type of dust that I've scattered elsewhere over the top of this and it should soak through and just give it a slightly different tinge but not be too shocking I hope There we are, and now for the sand. So I'll just scatter that over. What I'm gonna do also now is I'm gonna wash my brush and there's a couple of little spots I can see where I need to maybe stick some more sand down with the purple, more purple paint. So I'll get that done as well while I'm working on this, but I won't do that on camera. So that's what I'm doing there. I will show you what that's like when it's been dried as well. I've got a couple of items here which I'm going to start painting up for Rosie's Hobbit Hole uh, and uh, just to get them started. They're not going to be needed for a little while but I may as well paint them. I've undercoated them both just using the Vallejo Grey. Uh, I haven't yet got the airbrush set up obviously so that's been done with a hairy stick and I'm going to do these with a hairy stick as well. So the two items I've got is a water pump, a hand pump and a little kind of wooden storage unit which is which would have, have like a plants on or whatever it's like a planting station i'm going to do the planting station first because i think that's going to be really easy the method i'm going to use is very much um, just using washes and um, the old wood paint that i have from vallejo which i'm looking at my paint rack now and i can't see which is always what happens so I will find that paint and then I will show you uh, me painting it. Here it is, Vallejo Old Wood, which is, du -du -du -du, can't see the color, it's number 310, it doesn't have the longer number on it, this one, Panzer Aces anyway, it's a, uh, it's a tank color. So we'll give that a good shake and we're gonna water it down. I'm gonna put it on quite thin. It does actually come out quite thick, this one. So I'll pop up my wet palette. And I'm gonna use a large brush for this. I'm not very well prepared, as you can see, I've just sat down to do this. Spent a lot of time away from my painting desk again, and I'm trying to get away from that. And so we're gonna use quite a lot of water just to thin it down, and then almost wash it on. Shouldn't take too long to give it a basic colour. Tell you what, that didn't work, did it? I don't like those little there handles, they annoy me. I will just hold it in my hand. Right, I'll let this dry and we'll have a look at this. I'm also gonna paint the base of this with the same old wood color. So while that's out, I may as well get stuck in. The actual pump is gonna be painted with uh, natural steel. I think it is gonna be 
metal, but it's not going to be shiny. There we are. One pump. Clean that brush nicely. I'll make use of that silver, that steel another time. And now my idea with this here is to maybe use the um, the wood grain that I bought, wherever that is. Again, I've reorganized my paints, which is why I can't find anything. <laughs> um, the wood grain. But what I would also like to do is actually dry brush over um, or maybe put, the, put it on as a wash, a gray or white. Now this is because I want this to look really old and wood when it gets old does go gray. So the first thing I'm going to do before I do anything too dramatic with um, with the wood grain, when I can find it, that is, I'm going to dig out my grey wash, pale grey wash, there it is. Gonna pop some of that on my wet palette. And I'm going to wash it over and see what happens. Yeah, there we are. So a simple wash with a light grey from Vallejo. Just to bring the wood colour down, make it look really like it's been outside for a long time because these hobbits have lived in Hobbiton for a very long time. And so their stuff is probably a bit weather beaten. There we are. That's enough for now on those, I think. I will let them to dry and I'll come back to them when they're finished. So what was that? Six minutes and 40 seconds long, this clip. Um, and that hasn't taken me very long. So hopefully it won't have been that long for you to watch because I will have cut bits out. So I'll let them dry and uh, that's, um, that's uh, the first bits done, um, or started to be done for dressing outside of the Hobbit hole. Two weeks today is Rosie's first birthday. So I've got to get my skates on on this build. So what I'm going to do now, just very quickly in a brief break from work, is I'm going to do my sealing of all the um, stuff that I've poured all over the place on this because, yeah, there is still some that's loose and I do need to seal it before I can move on to the next step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it with um, the 99% alcohol and then I'm going to spray it with my very um, loose mix of PVA and water that I have in this sift bottle. So it's going to be a bit stinky, but hopefully it'll be very quick. I've put a lot of um, newspaper up because it is a messy process. There we are, that will now dry over the next rest of the day, hopefully not that long, and then I will pick it up and I will be able to start to put the coloration in. As you can see, the field didn't really change color as much as I want it to, so I'm just gonna paint that over the top of it because I want it to be a lovely rich garden. Uh, but yeah, that will now be left to dry and hopefully will be completely sealed and we can move on to the next step very soon. What a messy process that is. Well, that dried a lot quicker than I expected and it's now very nicely sealed. There are a few places where this has also revealed that some of the uh, um, dirt didn't stick down, but that's going to be fine. I can sort, sort that out while I'm while I'm doing the rest of the build. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to use this colour, the red, um, the bright red, which is what I put down over the field initially, and I'm just going to wash that over. It's very thin paint anyway, just to bring out the colour, because this is where Sam is working on his field. He's planting his veg, which is on its way, by the way, and he is going to have been adding as I've said about a hundred times in this video now, he's going to have been improving this soil. So I want it to stand out quite nicely. Pretty much the rest of the build will be covered over with static grass and other scenic materials. So it will be a very different look very shortly. But for now, I'm going to put this on and this will then finish this stage of the build and I can move on to static grass. Uh, 
that's perfect. That's going to look brilliant. All right, I'll leave that to dry again now. So now I'm going to be painting along the front of the hover hole because I'm really getting close to the pointy end of putting down static grass and I need to do that before I do the grass. What I've got is these paints which I've used before on the channel. So the colours are purple will be for the neighbour's house. The light yellow will be for Sam and Rosie's front door. And then this darker yellow mustardy colour will be going across all of the walls. So it's a relatively simple, um, simple scheme. And then I'll be leaving the windows because I'm not totally sure what I'm gonna do with them yet. So there's no point in spending time with them when I don't know what I'm gonna do. So I've got a couple of old brushes. Um, I'm gonna use a slightly smaller one than I do normally. And I'm gonna go in, first of all, with the purple, and I'm gonna do that front door, so. As usual with these, what I do is I give it a shake. That means that there's a little bit of paint in the lid, which means that there's no risk of me knocking it over, and that's normally more than enough to do the work that I need to do. Little tip for you there, if you're ever using tall bottles of paint from a hardware shop like that, and you're worried about knocking them over. So we're just very carefully Paint that door purple. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the lighter yellow, having cleaned my brush, and I'm going to paint number three's door. So again, shake. This is brand new, never been used, didn't open it before. Lovely bright yellow there. Gorgeous colour. So let's clean my brush, get all the purple off of it. There we are, dry it off a little bit. And then, ah, oh, it's a beautiful colour. There we are, that's that done. The wood will need to be touched up because it's been a bit battered in the application of, of the terrain mixture and stuff. But uh, yeah. So now we're gonna do the whole of the rest of this, which is gonna be done in this nice mustardy yellow, which actually comes out really beautifully. I did it on another Hobbit hole, which um, actually was one of the Sarissa buildings from there. Um, Badgers and Burrows, I think it is, range. And I did that as a hobbit hole for playing on some of our games and that's come out very well and that's the paint I used. And it really does, it really does pop. So I'm gonna very carefully paint that on all of the walls. There you are, that's a good first coat. I'll let that dry and I'll come back maybe later on and put another coat on. But doesn't that just transform it? I mean, it, just the application of a little bit of color, which works well because it's what they've designed it in the films. It just makes all the difference. So I'll be coming back, touching up the wood. I've got a bit of wood to put down here as well, which isn't in yet, which I have had meant to put in. <laughs> um, but I'll do that as well and then paint all the wood again and then maybe do another coat as well of the um, of the yellow at least um, and the doors um, and I'll show you what that looks like when it's completed but yeah this is really this is really coming on now. What I have now to do is create the slabs that run up to the front door on both hob holes. So I've got a bit of card, quite thick card as you can see uh, and I'm just drawing out shapes that I'll then cut out and glue down and then paint and what have you. So I'm going to get stuck into that while I drink my first cup of tea of the day and um, yeah, 
I think this is going to look well. That's that done. I've probably, hopefully, got far too many. Now I'm going to go over to the bench, start cutting them out and sticking them in on the path. As you can see, it's a gorgeous day here. So rather than sit inside, I uh, thought I'd come out onto the balcony. What I'm working on is making the hair fence for Rosie's Hobbit Hole. So while she plays in her ball pit just over there, I'm going to sit here with my choppet and I'm going to, uh, going to cut up loads and loads of coffee starers. After my very enjoyable time on the balcony, cutting up far too many of these, all I was doing was trimming the little round edges off. Uh, what I'm about to do now is actually attach them onto this, onto the piece, onto uh, the fence. So I'm splitting each one in half using a sharp knife. And then what I'll do is with PVA and with some of my clamps as well, can't have too many clamps remember, I will be sticking them on, I'm doing a two rail fence. So I can go around corners, they're very nice and bendy, uh, and uh, I'll just glue them all in place. So I will get started on that. I won't run the camera because it's going to be quite quick and it'll be too much hassling to move the camera so you can see what's going on. But I'll be back in a bit to show you what it looks like when it's finished. I've got this far. And would you believe it, I've run out of these clamps. So Beard Clipper does not have enough beard clamps. I have just gone to Amazon and ordered another 15 or 25 or something, quite a lot anyway, because yeah, that annoys me. I don't like running out of clamps. But for now, these are going to dry up and then I'll do the rest of it and then they'll dry up and then I'll do the rest of it. So it's going to take, with this number of clamps, it's going to take me three efforts. But it's looking really good, I'm very pleased with it. So I will let that dry, go and have my lunch, my dinner, come back up and move the clamps and do the rest. So there we have it. I have done all but the very, very last section of the fence. The only thing left is the top bit here. Everything else is done as a two bar fence and it's looking brilliant. So that's gonna have to wait until tomorrow now because it's right at the end of the day and I'm about to do the vlog for the 13th week, that dates this. So yeah, I will um, come back in tomorrow, finish off that final section and paint the fences. That's looking really nice now, I'm very, very pleased. All the fences are now glued in place and dry. So what I'm now going to do is use my wood stain. I've gone for bore, which is basically pine, and I'm gonna paint that over all of the wood, uh, all the wood fencing. Uh, and then I'll probably put a grey wash on it as well because in the pictures it looks very old and I might even put some green and stuff. But first of all, before I do any of that fancy stuff, what I need to do is put this bore all over the wood. So I'm going to get started and I'll pop some music on.
Well, there we are. That took not very long and is a very nice effect. So I'll let that dry and maybe come back for another coat uh, or maybe just come back and do the gray wash. But yeah, I'm really pleased with that. That was the correct color to pick. And now comes the flocking and static grass. So I was thinking about not bothering to put any flocking down at all, but having thought about it a little bit more, I've decided that I am going to put some flocking down. And what I'm going to be using is actually some purchased, which is unusual for me because I normally use my own that I've made myself. But I'm going to be using this, which is um, Struwe Material Lichtgrün from some, obviously, German company. I can't remember, I bought that in Belgium. So I'm going to put that on over this area and around this, uh, uh, all along the front here on this side of the board. So I will um, hopefully not get in shot because the camera's on the wrong side, so I normally do it. Um, so yeah, here goes, just using my normal terrain glue. few clips back I said I was just going to go and cut these out and stick them on the hobbit hole. It's a couple of days later now and I've just finished cutting these out. 
that has taken me quite some time. I ended up using some uh, nail scissors because they were small enough for me to guide around, uh, but it has put quite a nice little wheel on my thumb, as you can see, and one on my finger. So the pain that we go through for our hobby. What I am now going to do is just stick them down on the path. So I'll point the camera down now and you can watch me do this process. Here we are then. I have a couple of pictures to guide me. I have this one here, which clearly shows the path, as you can see. And I have this one here, which is from a bit further out, but also clearly shows the two paths. I probably have far too many of these slabs and I might even have made them too small, but it is what it is and I'm quite happy with how it looks. So I'm just gonna go ahead. So the idea is for me to just paint on some PVA here and then dot the um, slabs in place and leave them to dry because the thing next will be to put the grass between them. And I think the best way to do this is in this way. So I'm going to put some PVA down, neat, and use a wet brush to spread it out. Well, not too wet because I want it to be relatively neat actually so that it sticks quite well. I don't want it to be too thick, but I do not want it also to be too much thin. So with that little section done, let's start selecting and dropping in bits of slab. So yeah, they do, they start right at the edge. Okay, with that done, I'm now gonna scatter, I've decided while I've been working on this that I am gonna do immediately do a scatter of my flock over this because I'll probably struggle to paint the glue in between these tiles if I leave it. So it doesn't wanna be completely covered. If I'm looking at these pictures, I can see that there is some patches of mud but what I'll probably end up having to do, having said I'll struggle to paint between, is see if I can <laughs> to get a slightly thicker covering. Because on initial, on additional thoughts, I possibly should have done this process before I put the ground cover down. There we are, the front path to Sam and Rosie's Hobbit Hole is laid. Now I will do the same process for the other Hobbit Hole, but I won't subject you to watching that. So I'll show you what it looks like when it is completed. That wasn't too painful actually, which is a little bit of a surprise for me, but hey, we've done that. And I've also, as I say, scattered the flock just around the sides of the um, 
of the slabs. I'm probably going to have to go in and do some more flocking around this to make it a bit, a bit uh, more flush and fill in those gaps a little bit more, but that can come on. Uh, for now, I'm happy with that. What you'll also notice, apologies for the scraping sound there, what you'll also notice is that I've stuck in the water pump right there next to the path. Little hand pump which is also on the on the uh, images so I'm very pleased with how that's looking also and I'm actually pleased with how it's coming out overall so I'm going to walk away from that now leave it overnight come back and make sure that's all dried in the morning maybe put another um, scatter or two of the flock during the day um, and then when that's done I can then do the flock the same as I've done over the rest of the build over the front of the build over the rest of the build over the top of the mound and also around the rest of the garden so yeah it's getting on well now we have more flocking to do the paths are dry nicely so I'm going to continue flocking all over the whole of this this evening. I'm not going to point the camera down because it's going to take me quite a while and it'll just be a boring speeded up picture of stuff that you've seen before. But suffice to say, glue, flock, flock, leave it. And that'll be me for the next hour or so. I will see you at the end. That was actually quite an enjoyable process. So I did nearly break my back as I was attempting to put tiny amounts of paint between these slabs to fill in those gaps, which is not going to have been finished now, probably have to do it at least once more. But yeah, so what I've done is I have flocked all the way around in the garden, and then I've done a different colour on the bank, because I think that's what it would be, and I'm going to let that dry now, and then I'm going to seal it tomorrow, uh, and then carry on with doing some static grasses and finishing it off. Now, what I do realise that there's nothing I can do now about this being late, unfortunately. It's not going to be done in time for her birthday because one of the suppliers, which I ordered some uh, bits from, mainly plant pots, which are really hard to find in this scale, has unfortunately had a little bit of a life crisis and therefore isn't actually going to be able to ship them out at any point in time. I've no idea when they're actually going to start to be shipped, let alone get to me. So I've just got to suck that up so I'll get as far as I can and it'll be done and it will be looking nice for Rosie's birthday, but it won't be quite finished, unfortunately. I'll do as much as I can and have it as close as possible. And then I'll probably have to do a little bit of dressing inside each of these gardens with plant pots, etc. when those stuff arrives. However, what has arrived today is this. Look at this. So these are the plaques which were made for me by Nige. I'll put a link to his stuff in the video description below if he's given it to me by then. And yeah, this is the, um, the this is what's going to be mounted on the front and painted, and it's just I'm just blown away. I, I'm, I'm absolutely stunned at how nice it is, and that's going to really finish this off. So that will be on, and um, probably all of the front will be done, and there'll just be some stuff left at the back that won't be finished. But yeah, look at that beautiful thing, Rosie's Hobbit Hole, first birthday, 13th of February, 2020. Can't beat it. Thank you so much, Nigel. You've really done me proud and I'm, I'm blown away. So all of you, if you need anything done in terms of laser cutting, go jump over to him, and get, in, get in touch and give me a business. He really, really deserves it. It's an amazing job. So I'm gonna let that dry for now, let that go off and then tomorrow seal it probably with some varnish so that it's not reactivatable by um, using water. And then I'll carry on doing the flocking and all of the other all the other layers and textures that I want to put on this to make it look absolutely amazing. But I, I mean, it is already already beautiful and I'm already really pleased with it, but there's more and more and more to go on and it will just it'll keep getting better. There we are, very happy. The next thing to do on this is to apply the static grass. Now, I've got some summer static grass in two millimeter from Luke's APS, which is what I'm gonna be using. And I'm gonna begin by applying it around the edge of the board and actually to a bit that you can't see currently in this shot at this end of the board. I'm not gonna do anything in the gardens because I'm not ready to do that until I have all of the items I may want to dress them with, which could be a while, but that's how that is. And then once I've done the front with this short static grass, I'm gonna go and work on the mound, use maybe some dried static 
grass or some dead um, or some, some longer static grass that's a little different in color just because that's what it looks like it is in the picture a little bit more of a yellowy color like here so I'll get started on this bit uh, I won't film the entire process but I will do a bit so that anyone that hasn't seen me do this before can see the process of applying static grass uh, and I'll pop some music on for you to listen to This slightly odd view of the Hobbit hole um, upside down and pointed towards me is going to allow me to continue doing this effect across the whole of the bank. Now I did this yesterday evening uh, and interestingly enough while I was doing it I was feeling quite unhappy with how it looked. Uh, I thought oh it looks terrible, it's messy, it's horrible but I left it. I just left it. I walked away and when I've come back to it this morning I've been really happy. So. I'm very pleased that I did what I did. I did a bit of an experiment um, while I was doing the flocking and I'm going to carry on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm getting this effect. One of the issues is, is that the static grass applicator I've got, as great as it is, well, we'll see next, very nice. It does struggle at longer lengths. This here is six mil, which is right at the top of its limit, if not above its limit. And so for this area along here, what I had to do was put the static grass on and then use, <clears throat> i reach this, a pick like this, if that can focus, there we are, to actually lift along and make it stand up a bit and scrape it so it wasn't lying down and falling forwards over the edge of the of the um, of the actual roof and that technique worked really well and I have seen someone else do it and I can't remember who it is so apologies if I've stolen that wholeheartedly from someone else. The rest of it I've applied with the classic static grass applicator and just not worried too much about it standing up. It's messy, it's supposed to be messy. So what I'll do is I'll get myself all gathered together, I'll show you the materials I'm using and then I'll show you me applying it just off camera over on the other side of this chimney. This is the area that I'm going to be doing with the static grass. So let me show what I've got. First of all, I have a nice tall kiln the jar, which is stuffed full of World War Scenics static grass. This particular is the summer static grass at six millimeters. Like I say, it is right at the very limit of the applicator. So I've got my trusty static grass applicator, which I will now prepare. And what I've done for this length of flock is I'm using the largest grill because that's what you need. So what we'll do is we'll get some of this and we'll put it in the static grass applicator. Now, one of the issues I have with this really long static grass, if I can get that to be visible in the light, is it's big balls. Let me, let me just pull it out. It's big lumps of the, of the grass, which is not gonna be, make it very easy to apply. So what I do for that is, let me just zoom out slightly so you can see that a little easier. There we are is I actually pluck it into the uh, applicator. So I actually pull the little lumps apart, which is the right pain, but if you don't, you just end up shaking and shaking and shaking and nothing comes out. If anyone has any better ideas or any hints and tips how to avoid this problem with your static grass, your longer grasses, please hit me up in the comments below. Gratefully received, and I'll say thank you. With that all broken apart so that it will now fall out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my, again, World War Scenics Fast Tack Glue. Um, I still have some of this and I have some, another bottle because this one's running out. So uh, this might run out during this, during this video as it happens. And what I do is I actually put quite a lot on. Then I've got a, a loose brush which I have sitting in water and I use that to spread it around because I don't want it to be what can sometimes happen with this fast tack glue is it actually turns into little kind of um, ridges and that doesn't look very, well it can sometimes look very uh, realistic if you're doing like a, a line between it on a track and you're doing the line down the middle between the wheels 
but in this case I'm looking to, there it is, it's running out. There we are, the death of a bottle of glue, live on camera. Um, yeah, so, but I'm looking at spreading this out so that it's actually a, a generous covering. I am this tight that I will squirt out the last little bit. <sighs> There we are, that is dead now. And that's good, because that's about as much as I would normally do, just to give me a good covering. Spread it around, as I say, with your very wet brush. Brush back in the water. Static glass, glass, static grass applicator. Not that I'm really worried about it standing up, but I'll still turn it on. And I'll still put my pin in, and then I'll shake it up. And as you can see, this is a very messy application. You can see why. When I did this yesterday, I wondered if I was making a huge mistake. There we are. So as you can see, it's not really bothering about standing up. And even if I move this close, it's not really bothering about standing up. But it is making a nice, colourful, various, variegated, whatever the word's going to be, effect on the bank. And that's what it looks like when it is still wet. I will now carry on and do the rest of the model. There's no point in you watching that. And I will show you what it looks like when it is complete. There you have it. I've applied the six millimeter summer grass all over the mound. Uh, had a bit of help with Angela, uh, from Angela, so that was nice uh, to just uh, lift it so I can get to the ends correctly. And that's looking really, really nice. I'm really pleased. I'm blown away by how well this is coming together. I always surprise myself. It's funny, isn't it? So I'm going to let that dry. There's a fair amount more to be done with it. Um, and I have a very few days left to finish it. So that at least it's nearly done for her birthday, even if it won't be finished. I'm hoping that I have a delivery tomorrow, which will include some stuff that will go in the garden. Uh, so I'll be able to work on this bit here, putting some crops in and maybe putting some flowers and other tufts and what have you over the rest of the build. I'm going to be putting a little bit of, I can't see my hand here, it's actually here. In this corner here, this field here, I'm going to be looking at putting some kind of animal, maybe a horse or maybe a cow or a sheep or something like that, just because to make it some interest. I need to make the, the fences, the gates as well. So there's a lot more to be done. So I'm not going to be bored while I'm waiting for my deliveries to turn up. But that's where it is right now. I will let that dry overnight and return to that tomorrow. Yesterday I took another delivery from Sarissa Precision and in that delivery came this Burrows and Badgers little kind of, what they call it, undergrass, which is basically a bunker entrance that has a post box on it. And that post box is going to be perfect for Rose's Hobbit Hole. It is these little sections here which I need to use. And so while I'm editing the vlog for this week, vlog 14, as it happens, what I'm going to do is, it's taken a little bit of time to process the files for some reason. They are quite long files, there's a lot of speeded up things this week. And so I'm going to just start to assemble this little bit of kit so that I can put that onto the board a little bit later on. There's no point in sitting staring at a progress bar, you may as well get something done. And this is a really good way of achieving hobby time when you think you haven't got any hobby time. Pay attention, if you find yourself sitting around waiting for something and there's a couple of minutes you can spend doing some hobby time, well, it's not obvious, just get some hobby time done. So first of all, I'm going to clip these out and push it out in the way that I did on my beginners how to work with MDF kits bit. Very, very simple to do. Get a very sharp X-Acto blade and just do that. So I can now pop basically all of this away apart from the instructions, which is good. So I'll slide that over onto the bench behind me. You can see that I'm at my computer desk. Um, I will be pausing this video whenever I have to do any editing because I do need to get that done. And having said that, having chopped those out, I now need to process the next file. So I will do that and I'll be back with the next clip of this little assembly build in a very short while. So the next clip is loading very, very slowly. Let's get stuck into this. Very simple build, won't take me very long. I have my PVA, just out of shot. I have my traditional um, dinner plate. And the instructions are right there. So you take this base and you have this little kind of notch that goes
there. That's a little bit strange. So that goes there. So that goes on there, like that. Doesn't that then stick there? So I'm a bit confused. Yeah, no, it's got to be like that. It has to be like that. So, oh yeah, so... Okay, so it's a little bit balancing act that. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to put that in the middle. We're going to put that coming in from underneath. Oh, I see. Okay, so I've got it out. I've worked it out now. Always look at read the instructions three times before you start videoing so you don't look like an idiot. <laughs> so, first of all, let's put a dip of PVA glue in the middle there. And let's situate that there because that's basically the first thing that we're going to do. And that goes in like that. Then we'll put a little dip of PVA on each side here. And we'll get the first one of these. And that will go there. You see? And then with a little bit of dip of PVA that we've got on this side. This is going to be a minute's job to build. It took longer getting confused than I would actually build in the thing. But that's cool. Confusion is common in my head. That then can go on there. My fat fingers. I am proof that having fat fingers should not stop you doing fiddly things like this. And then last but not least, a little bit of PVA on each end. And what we'll then do is I'll then prime this during the next, once it's dried, obviously, use my sealant. So that then has these two little knocks here. Hopefully this has been in shot. I've not been looking at all because it's been fiddly. Yes, it looks like it will have been in shot. And then these go on the end. And then you have a little post box, delivery box, whatever you want to call it. And that was quite easy to assemble, a bit fiddly, a little bit confused at first, as you saw, but we've done it. So there we are, let's see if I can get in shot. Yeah, there we are, look, a little, a little ditty delivery box to go outside Rosie's Hobbit Hole. So I will let that to dry now, I will clip that into one of these little clips I've got to hold it up and let the PVA dry, and when that's dry, I will prime it. And the next video clip has finished processing, so onwards. The delivery postal box, whatever you want to call it, has dried, and I'm so pleased. I've just actually offered it up to the, um, to the Hobbit Hole, and it's going to look perfect. What I'm going to do now is quickly seal it in this MDF quick drying clear sealer. Uh, and I'm going to do it in a very simple way. This is the uh, little rock crocodile clip thing that I use, uh, that I'll be using to uh, hold it and dry it. And I'm just literally going to dip it. There we are. Right, so that's done. <laughs> Simple as that. I'll let that dry. And then when I come to uh, paint it, um, the paint will now no longer um, soak in and it'll be a much quicker, more efficient process. So I'll stick that to dry and I'll be back and paint that again very, very shortly. This is now ready for painting. So I'm going to be, I'm going to zoom in a little bit because I want you to see it. So I'm going to be using two colors. I'm going to be using burnt red, which is 70814. And I'm going to be using dark gray, which is 70994. Now the actual body and most of the uh, box is the dark burnt red. And then the little kind of door on the end is going to be gray. So I'm actually going to paint the gray first. And then I'll do the red around the outside. And I'm still going to be using, not my wet palette, but just going to be using a relatively dry, cheap brush and my um, kitchen, my normal dining room plate palette. So we will paint that dark grey and we'll do the other side as well. There we are. Just like that. Very simply, 
and then wash that off. I put way too much dark grey out. It's a good thing I've got some other stuff I want to use grey on. And then we will clean my brush and straight in with the burnt red. There we are. Which is going to look absolutely wonderful. It's funny, I was looking at this on the Sarissa website for a little while, thinking, hmm, that could work quite well for my Hobbit. Hole for Rosie. And I, and I was holding off and holding off. And then I pulled the trigger suddenly, as I will do. And am I ever glad I did? Because it's just perfect. There we are. And now very carefully, the ends. I'm leaving the little handle because I might bob that with a little bit of metallic, but I'm not sure at the moment. There we are, that's one end. And now the other end. And there we are. One Hobbit hole sized delivery box. So I'll just let that dry and then we'll stick it on the diorama, which I'm very excited about seeing. Actually, there's a little bit there that needs doing. There we are. How about that? A little red delivery box. Fantastic. I'm going to paint the stick with the grey. Right, I'll let that dry now um, and we'll be back to show you when I stick it on the display board. Okay, now we are ready to install the little um, post off box thing, delivery box. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my bridle, my square bridle that I've used before. And it's going to sit in here just behind this fence post. So I'm going to press really hard. Such a great tool this. Get yourself one of these. Let me see if I can remember to put a link to the ones I bought, wooden handled. Um, and they've got one with a chisel handle, one with a circular one, and that one that's square. They're very, very useful. And then that means that this has a place to fit in. And it will slot into the base, and I can glue it in there. So let me get some PVA. Friendly, friendly PVA. What would we do without PVA as hobbyists? Mm. Stick some PVA all over that. I will obviously be putting some terrain around the base. And there you have it. Perfect. That just looks great. Let me see if I can zoom that in even better. There we are, right in the centre. Get that focus. Gonna focus. Come on, there we are. Look at that. Just brilliant. Really pleased. There we are, actually. You know what? Yeah. Really pleased with that. That's absolutely spot on. Right, gonna let that dry and then we'll be back for the next process shortly. There you are, the end of another hour and a half long epic. And if you got this far, I, I really do. I, I salute you. Um, fantastic. I hope you've enjoyed that. I think there's going to be one more in these series, taking it all the way through to the absolute completion. It was an epic build. I look at it every day. Rosie still loves it. And, well, what more can I say? That's, that's why I did it. And it just blows my mind how much she likes it. So, yes, I'll close off, as I always do, by saying, if you've enjoyed this, please do give me a subscribe. And don't forget to ding that bell and select all so that whenever one of my videos goes live, then you are informed by YouTube. Uh, and of course, thank you so much for watching this video and getting this far. And please do stay safe, stay well, and stay healthy.